Hey guys, my name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Give me a minute. It's goddamn headphones. I'm trying to like make it on time to do the stupid ass review. Hang on for a second. This goddamn hair of mine it keeps getting in the goddamn way. Ugh. The one thing about having long hair, it really fucks with everything when it comes to putting on headphones and microphones and all this other bullshit. Give me a second. Sometimes I'm good at good at right now. I'm not at not at. Say yes, so say no. Cause I really need somebody. I really need somebody. Baby girl. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm good now. Alright, uh, am I good now? Okay, let's start back over again. Hey guys, my name is Devontae and I'm back at it again with a no no wait, no, that's not the catch race. God damn it, do the catch race right, Devontae. Okay. Hey guys, my name is Devontae and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. So with all that bullshit that was going on right there, yes, I got into a fight with my headphones. What are you gonna do about it, huh? What are you gonna do about another goddamn thing? You gonna what you, you know you know what your bitch ass is gonna do? You know what you guys are gonna do? You're gonna sit back and you're gonna enjoy the goddamn stream. Wait, this isn't the stream. I should start doing more live stream videos. Should I start doing more live stream videos? I'm not on drugs, I promise you right now. I'm just really excited because tonight is SmackDown, folks. We got the return of Roman Reigns, gonna do a contract sign with LA Knight. I heard John Cena's gonna be on the tap for tonight. I don't, as a matter of fact, why am I gonna sit here and just like think of shit that I probably am lying about? Well, I know the contract signed, but is John Cena going to be here tonight? I just, like, literally just said the shit out of whole cloth. Uh, let's see. So, oh, yeah, yeah, See, John Cena is going to be there. So, he's going to have a showdown with Solo Sokoa, a.k.a. Umaga and Spirit. And Bianca Belair is back. You know, I'm on my own against the wall. My weave is long and won't fall out. Psych. No, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure I got longer hair than Bianca Belair. What do you guys think? Do I have more luxurious hair than Bianca Belair? I'm not counting her weave. I'm counting, like, you know, when she has to take the weave out. Does she ever show her real hair? Girl, I swear to God, girl, I'm gonna pull your motherfucking weave out. Uh-huh. <sighs> so, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be one of those, it's gonna be one of those videos, folks. It's, it's definitely gonna be one of those videos. Maybe it might be good. Who knows? Maybe I might actually sit back I might put my little smart cap on and I might just enjoy the show for what it really is. Give you guys a professional analysis. Or the show might absolutely goddamn suck and I'm just gonna troll the shit out of this entire video. Or it might just be good regardless and I'm still gonna troll the shit out of this video because again, it's gonna be one of those videos. I'm super excited right now. I found some steroid cream. I got the bumps off my ass and right now I can sit on the toilet and actually enjoy the show for what it really is. And I'm gonna fucking watch some shit. I'm also gonna watch that shit while taking the shit. Why? Because it's obligatory so with that being said folks enough of my ramblings let's get directly into the video that way let's go or unless you skipped it and you know you probably skipped timestamps and if you did then uh fuck you but i guess it would have mattered because you skipped the timestamp so you probably wouldn't be here so let's go come on let's go come on all right so before we talk about this seven and yeah i put out this short earlier about LA Knight disrespecting the homie Roman Reigns, but nah, nah, nah. See, I'm gonna see, I'm, I'm gonna cut off LA Knight. Eh, eh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wrong, wrong Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yo, you can't, you, you can't do that, okay? You can't go out there and you can't be showing up the tribal chief, okay? You can't be going out there and pretending that you're a somebody, Mr. NY Knight. You can't be doing those kind of disrespectful things to our tribal chief. See, this is why he gonna knock the, he gonna knock the rock out of you, okay? He gonna knock the bloodline out of you, okay? He gonna knock the Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonation out of you. Now, you hear? You hear? You hear. So they get inside the ring. You got LA Knight. He's still trying to take over the show. Bruh, lo know your role. Let me take let me take a role out of your page, okay? Because you are the rock after all. Know your role, sir. You see him he's sitting in the chair. And he sat at the head of the table out of all places. The blasphemy. The 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 what what did, what did he say from um the young Turks, those communists? What did he say? Uh what's that dude's name? Rashad, Rashad, whatever. Rashad, the Rashad guy, you know the guy who lies all the time on white people? What's his name again again? Whatever the fuck his name is. What did he say? The caucasity. For him to be sitting at the head of the table pretending he's a somebody. Bro, the title, the last time I remember you competing for a title, you couldn't even get a number one container spot for the United States Championship. And beforehand, you wore a non-sanctioned title. You were no different than Hook. You won the goddamn million dollar championship belt. A belt so goddamn useless, it hasn't been sanctioned since it, since it fucking came to fruition 35 years ago. 
bro, you got belts that I wasn't even born yet when it was around. That wasn't even session that you're trying to sit out here and pretend that you're a son. Let me remind you, LA Knight, who you're talking to. You're talking to the Samoan tribe, but you are talking to the head of the table. You're talking to Big Dick Willie himself, Roman Reigns. Pause. Yo, he's, he, he's trying to get spody. He's trying to get spody. His crackhead ass trying to get spody. And Roman Reigns had to put him in his place and had to remind him, hey, yo, bruh, this contract signing thing that's going on, this is your first time doing this. You know how long I've been doing? You know, I got more contract signings. I got more of this important time put on me than you have had matches. Home skillet biscuit. You know what? No. Home skillet. Home skillet breadcrumbs. You don't even deserve the biscuit. You ain't gonna get the biscuit, bitch. But yeah. All that happened, L.A. Knight tried to retort. I didn't pay attention to what he was saying, okay? I like L.A. Knight, okay? I like Stone Cold Steve Austin. What did they, someone said this in the comment section. I like that better. I like Stone, Stone, what's his name? Stone, Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson, Steve Austin, okay? I said the whole guy did not, I, I fucked up the whole comment. See what I did there? See, that's what happens when you're a retard, but that's okay. You know who's a bigger retard? L.A. Knight. Why? Because he has the nerve to feel as if he can go back and forth with our tribal chief on the microphone without proving his worth, okay? So this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen, okay? You may have put Jimmy Uso, or excuse me, <clears throat> Jim Uso through a table. You may have done all these, this, this running of the mouth, okay? But we still have a main event coming tonight with John Cena most likely confronted Solo Sokoa. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the main, the main event because at the risk of sounding like a misogynist and I'm gonna go full on misogynist. If they put that goddamn Bianca Belair seven in the main event, I'm gonna go full, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go head, I'm gonna go full on retard mode. I'm gonna go full on retard mode. You're gonna hear a rant like you never heard a rant before because we don't need to see Bianca Belair in the goddamn main event over John Cena and Solo Sokoa. Hell, we probably don't even have to see John Cena and Solo Sokoa over Roman Reigns at LA Knight, but that's okay because 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 when it's all said and done it's gonna circle back we're gonna hit a little bit of a 360 we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna round off that block we're gonna hit the blocks okay our ops are around and we just try we try we try not to be seen the headlights gonna get cut off okay gonna get cut off and Roman Reigns and LA Knight are gonna somehow fit themselves to that main event. You know what's gonna happen? Roman Reigns gonna get his revenge. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna happen. I'm predicting it right now. That's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. This is still a word from an Israeli. Maybe not go there. That's a spoiler. Roman Reigns did not take this disrespect. Not from LA Knight. Not from his parents. Not even from God himself. Not my God. W whatever God that is not my God. He will not take this disrespect lying down. We will come back and we will see the finale as to whether or not, no, as to how Roman Reigns got his revenge on LA Knight and all this disrespectful nonsense. Until then, let's get to this immigration match. You got Carlito Caribbean Cool versus Santos Escobar versus Singing in the Fields Massa and the tag team match. So let's get to that right about now. See, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this disrespect, bro. They're going to stop disrespecting my nigga Roman, bro. Like, real talk, bro. You got Jim Uso. This motherfucker comes inside of Roman's locker room. Unannounced, mind you. Unannounced. No knocking. I ain't hear no knock. I know y'all didn't hear no knock. Jim Uso brings his ass inside of Roman's locker room. Flops his farty ass down on his couch. Holding his goddamn ribs. Roman's looking at him like, what the hell are you doing? That's what I'm thinking too. I'm looking at him like, yeah, what the hell is he doing? Like you, got, you, like, you ruined a perfectly good conversation. You got Paul Heyman trying to put over the Green Bay Packers. He got his old custom championship belt looking all nice, looking better than the other unsanctioned championship belts looking at you, Hook. Yeah, I'm going to keep going after Hook. Fuck Hook. Like, like they're, they're talking, they're, they're roasting LA Knight and the Green Bay Packers. In the middle of roasting, and then you got Jim Uso plopping his fat ass down on the couch. Ooh, I'm on the injured reserve. No, you're not. No, you no, know you're, you're not. You know what Roman said? Roman said, what were you doing out there? He said, I was running the play. Roman said, you were running the play. You didn't run the correct play. You did it wrong. You know what Jim Uso said, y'all? He said he was running a hot route. He was running an audible. Who the fuck told him he had the right to run an audible? Nigga, you trying to get into the good graces of the bloodline, and and you're running audible. See, this is the this is the kind this is the kind of shit that I get on. I get mad on behalf of Roman Reigns because of this stupid shit. Jim Uso should know his goddamn role. Know your damn role, and then Roman, and then, and then oh, it gets better. Now, granted, he corrected himself, so good for him. He asked him. No, he told, he demanded Jim Uso 
get your lazy ass up and go take care of this L.A. night problem. You know what he said? He said, I'm on the injured reserve list. <laughs> Roman's like, you're on a what? And you know what he did? He did the right thing. He said, you know, I'm not on the injured reserve list. Exactly. Exactly. Now get your peasy head ass up. Take your lame ass outside the locker room and go take on New York night. NY Knights right there. Go take care of him. Sit on and then he's like, yeet. Nigga, get these nuts in your mouth. Get the fuck up and go take care of the problem. Stupid ass nigga. Speaking of stupid ass niggas. Yo, this tag team match. This tag team match. Oh, dear God almighty. See, the match I didn't really care too much about. Just your typical tag team match. You got the Street Profits. You got Santos Escobar. You get Carlito Carlito being cool. They're all like that. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. You know, they're like wrestling, doing their thing, doing spots, nice spots, really cool spots, complicated spots, but spots nonetheless. They're good. They're fine. They're cool. And you get to a spot where Rey Mysterio, he's back there in Ice Protection Agency, back there. He's looking on really, really weird camera angle view because, you know, WWE wrestlers, they don't know how to stand and look directly out of a look at look at TV because that's how normal people stand, right? I stand sideways when looking at my TV, silly bastards. Well, but that's okay because you know what? Because Logan Paul did the right thing and he punched Rey Mysterio on the head from behind. He's like, "Hey, look at the camera this way, you joke." Now I'm gonna correct your stance. Let me let me knock you in the head a little bit. Try to put some logic inside your mind. And then you had Carlito. They're staring at them. Carlito and Santos Escobar. They're looking at the vignette screen, the the Titan Tron, if you will. And did they just go back to the match and then win the match and then go back there and go check out Rey Mysterio? Did they use common sense and say, hey, the security guards got him, the world over got him, okay, whatever the case may be? No! You know what they did? This stupid bastard Santos Escobar told him to go backstage and go look after him and he put himself in a handicap position. As a matter of fact, Logan Paul's on TV right now. Hang on for a second. Wow, there. Well, look at that, folks. So, wow, Jimmy Noble appears, right? Yo, first off, okay, so before I continue on real quick, you know what, let me just finish this off so I can stop talking about this, because Logan Paul did come, and he was talking to uh, one of these goddamn robot interviewers, and he's just like, my hand's bigger than Rey Mysterio's head, and probably bigger than his goddamn brain. If not bigger than Rey Mysterio's brain, for sure bigger than Santos Escobar brain. So let's go back to what I was saying before I was really interrupted by these jobbers. Uh, by the way, Shotzi, shout out to you. I, I love your hairstyle. Right, uh, great. I love your rain jacket. Great. I know you did it for your sister. I know she has cancer. God God rest her soul. She's still alive. Okay, I hope she does well. And, you know, you could probably relate because you yourself are cancer also. But that's okay. Continuing on, though, as I was saying, no more reflecting on jobbers. You had Santos Escobar put himself into a position where he's wrestling a fucking handicap match, which, by the way, newsflash, yeah, he got his ass whipped because he thought he was so tough that he could actually combat the two, ta not just not just a tag team, but former tag team champions. And looking at this from a cave standpoint and from a realistic standpoint, dude, you are like literally half the size of both of those guys combined. Actually, you know, individually. Combined, they probably are like fucking three feet monsters or whatever, three feet tall, whatever. That was a joke that I was supposed to tell and I completely fucked it up. God damn it. This, see, this is what happens when you don't wipe your ass. When you don't wipe your ass, shit like this happens. You forget the kind of jokes you're going to tell. But after the match, though, as I talked about, saw all the stuff about Logan Paul, and then he met Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens is just like, oh, I have a shirt on. And Logan Paul's like, that's a dumbass shirt. And he walks away. And then these two losers come up, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, and they're just like, yada, 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 yada. you can put us both in the face. And Kevin Owens is like, yada, 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 yada. I can put you both in the face. And then, as I said before, a wild Jamie Noble and a Jason Jordan appears. I know, rare sightings, right? Talk about Pokemon, holy fuck. They're the they're the ho-ho of the wrestling division. Nah, nah. In order to be the ho-ho of the wrestling you have to actually be legendary. You have to actually be known. Maybe Mewtwo? No, still too legendary. <sighs> they're the Wobbuffet. There you go. They're the Wobbuffet of the wrestling division. Okay, Wobbuffet. But no, um, you had fucking, um these clowns they're like joking around they put themselves to a position for kevin Owens to punch them both in the face which he did and then he laid them out he's like jimmy look at me i actually punched them in the face and waba fett let off <sighs> oh and then you got a promo from dragon lee and he's like talking to cedric alexander I, I, you know what maybe i don't know maybe it's a little bit of a, um a mandela effect i swear to god i thought cedric alexander got released already Maybe that's just me. It's probably just me. I mean, this nigga was gone for so long. He's been in catering, lost in catering, catering head looking ass boy. He was in catering for so long that this nigga had a high top fade and he reappears and he has fucking dreadlocks. That's how long he was in catering for. Or maybe that's just me. It's probably just me. No, it's not just me. Don't sit here and fucking lie and say it's just me. I ain't motherfucking crazy. Your mama might be crazy because she gave birth to a turd like you, but I ain't crazy. Crazy would have been your dad actually fucking pulling out on time, okay? But with that being said, coming up next is Shotsy 
Stacey's Blackheart cringy ass. She's going to have a match with people that I don't fucking know. They're the tag team champions, the women tag team champions. I think I know who they are. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Probably botches. Let's continue with the motherfucking show. What? Are they doing John Cena and Solo Sokoa coming up next already? I know it's the top of the hour, but goddamn, bro. Another women's second. What? <coughs> no! Fuck! No! 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 Wait! No, wait! Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. No, they did say Jim Uso was going to be in the match later on tonight with LA Knight. Thank God. I, hate that. I think that's going to be the main event. Please, God, let that be the main event. We don't need Bianca Belair. There's no disrespect to Bianca Belair, okay? I like Bianca Belair. I think she's awesome. Really want to see her versus Jay Cargill. I want to see a ghetto booty match. I, I definitely want to see all that. But enough with the women in the goddamn main event. The women are boring. I know people are going to be in the audience, but why are you going to be such a misogynist? And Devante, why do you hate the women? I don't hate the women. Again, talk to your girl. She slept with me. I love all women, including your girl. She's the best. Top is on point, gotta say. But there's no reason to have the man. Like, I didn't watch NXT, uh, the Halloween Havoc show, but I was told, or at least I heard through an interview or a uh, podcast, whatever. How the fuck did I get told interview and podcast all mixed up together? Ah! <sighs> gotta remember to wipe my ass. Seriously, gotta remember to wipe my ass. Um... Cause I'm talking too much shit right now. I was I the fuck damn it. Ugh. I heard through the grapevine. There we go. That they had like a million and one goddamn women matches already in that stupid ass NXT show, right? Like we don't need to see this shit all the goddamn time, okay? We get it. Women, 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 women. We get it. We I, we love women. Women are awesome, but damn it. Give them one match, maybe two tops, and then that's it. Fuck. No one cares about the damn women. Are they booty shaking? Huh? Are they twerking? Nah, okay, I don't give a fuck then. Damn, bro. Uh, speaking of lame ass matches with no booty shaking, yet women are still participating. Shotzi Blackheart versus Chelsea Green. Now, actually, I will say low key, Chelsea was that Chelsea was on point. She was good. I actually didn't know she was that good of a wrestler. I know she used to be on TNA, Impact Wrestling, Irrelevant Wrestling, however you like to refer to it. I know she was doing her thing on that show for a while, and people were like, "Oh, she's so good, yada 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 yada. Oh, she's so great, yada 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 yada. Oh, she keep, she should be in the kitchen making sandwiches for me, yada yada yada." I understand, I get it, but like. I didn't know she was actually this good. She was actually on point for spots. Those drop kicks that she was doing were actually pretty fucking good. But unfortunately, she wrestled with Chelsea Blackheart, and Chelsea Blackheart could bring everything down to a to a snail slow pace. I mean, she's like a black person having sex. You want to get into it. You don't want to fuck fast. You want to uh, you want to grind into it slowly. Get into that bitch slowly. Dig in them cheeks if you can. Okay, that's that's how slow she was moving. She was moving in slow motion. She was going through the motions. Chelsea Blackheart sucks. Okay, she's a good person for what she did to her sister or did with her sister or however she's taking care of her sister. That's awesome. She's great. There's a spot for her on the car to be a jobber, but she sucks. Like, she sucks in the rain. She sucks. She's a black hole of fucking suckage, okay? And the fact that she completely... I mean, in my opinion, kind of fucking sabotaged Chelsea Green because it was one spot she did with that fucking, it was actually two spots. The over the road top spot, she just moved so damn slow. And then that Russian leg sweep spot was actually pretty dope. It would have been nicer if, you know, Chelsea or uh, Chelsea Blackheart put herself into position quick enough that fucking, I'm gonna slightly close, I'm gonna do a reverse Irish whip and then slowly climb onto the middle rope. It just looks so fucking goofy. And I felt bad for Chelsea because this is her spot to actually show what she's worth. And yet you have this ass hat fucking Chelsea Blackheart ruining everything because she fucking sucks <sighs> but yeah she got the win the uh, Chelsea Blackheart it is because she's a baby face and Chelsea Green is a hill and she sucks and she sucks she sucks as a character not as a wrestler she's pretty good as a wrestler character too actually Chelsea Blackheart sucks as a character though she sucks as a character and she sucks as a wrestler I'm talking way too fast right now why because John Cena's on my television an actual star so let's get to that right about now again Bianca Belair love you I know you're off the wall, you know, something against you being against the wall. I know Montez Ford raped you. I understand. I don't want to see you in the main event. I would much rather see, you know, something involving the actual main eventers, especially with Roman Reigns being on the show. Thank you. Fuck you. Bye. You know what? I actually kind of want to see this Dragon Lee match versus Cedric Alexander. I actually kind of want to see it's going to be high octane, folks. We're going to get a lot of speed, a lot of flips, a lot of kicks. It's going to be a little bit of an AEW type of match. But that's okay because I like Dragon Lee. And I like and I like Buster Rhymes. And, you know, Dragon Lee, Buster Rhymes, it should be a good match. I, I can't wait to see it. But, um, yeah, you had this promo with John Cena and uh, Paul Heyman. And, you know, I really want to see what that sign was saying, bro. They got rid of the guy. Did you guys see that? Yeah, the guy with the sign. He's like, John Cena. 
uh, don't say something about the military. I couldn't make out a sign all too well. I feel very bad. I really wanted to read his sign, but that's okay. Cause you know why? Because John Cena, he was like, I know you guys are losing respect for me. And that, that sign really did remind me. Yes, John Cena, or dare I say, John China. I am absolutely losing respect for you. At first I had a lot of respect for you, but then that guy with the sign reminded me of something that happened about two years ago. John China, huh? Huh? You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna sit there. You're gonna get on your knees and start sucking some of that Jing Jang Ping, Han, Han, John China. You thought I forgot about you, John China, China. No, I didn't forget. You damn right. You damn right. I lost respect for you, John China. Now, as a wrestler, that's a different story. As a person, that's a totally different story, if you know what I'm saying. But anyways, he starts going back and forth with Paul Heyman, and Paul Heyman's just like, hey, remember about 20 years ago, I actually like drafted you. You were like my first pat my first pick draft from OVW. And then like, you know, you did things and you sold out arenas for 20 years. And I had to say, whoa, hang on there, buddy pal. Reel it in for a second, Mr. Paul Heyman. Now I understand right now you got Israel on your mind, but let me remind you for a second what happened about 20 years ago. 20 years ago, John China was out there wrestling Brock Lesnar and wasn't winning any kind of championship belts. He was getting over. But I will dare say that he was not selling out arenas. Was he a draw? Probably at that point he was proving his point, proved himself. But as an actual draw, na 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 na. Probably want to put that on John Cena more like 18 years ago. I'll even be charitable and I'll say 19 years ago. But 20 years ago, nah. Oh, uh, Devonta, you're being semantic right now. Why are you using semantics right now? He said 20. He's probably just running it out, Devonta. Shut the fuck up. But yeah, no. Uh, he started to ramble on and. You know, John Cena, you're the best of all time, and you know, you're the GOAT, and you, you, you face Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, and then now you're not the GOAT. And honestly, Sol is gonna beat your ass, and that's not a prediction, that's a spoiler. And then Sol Sokol comes in the ring, and he clobbers John Cena, and he beats the shit out of him, and he hits him with a small spike. And then he starts going, Yahoo! He sounds like fucking Banjo Kazooie. And that's okay, that's fine, because you know why? Because Solo Sokoa and John Cena, they're going to give me some of that nostalgia thrill. They're going to give me a nostalgia match. They're going to get me in my feels. They're going to go back to being that 15-year-old Devontae, that 15-year-old millennial smart. And I'm going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy this match. Because you know why? 15 years ago, I was hating John Cena and his fucking Umaga. I was hating that feud. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I liked the match at the Royal Rumble. Completely different from the actual fucking feud that was going on. Now, some of you guys, again, were probably backstroking in your dad's ball sack. So let me kind of catch you up on what the fuck was going on 17 years ago. John Cena had a feud with not just Umaga, but he was also at the same time feuding with John Morrison. Uh, what, what does he go by nowadays? Johnny Nitro, John John Mundo, John Mexico, whatever the fuck his name is nowadays. He's in AEW right now. But he was feuding with John Morrison along with Molina. You know, that whore that sometimes is somewhere spotted on the side of the street corner begging to be you know, put back on WWE, I'll suck your dick if you put me back on WWE. You had John Morrison, you had Molina, you had Umaga, and you had Kevin fucking Federline all at one time feuding with John Cena, and no sir, Bob, I'm okay. I hated, hated, hated that feud. One of the worst feuds of all time, actually. That's actually the feud that put, uh, uh, WWE in the state of Nadir for me going forward that I have yet to really recover from. It's been like 17 years. It was that feud, that John Cena, Umaga, Kevin Federline bullshit storyline. Now, again, John Cena and Umaga had a great match at the Royal Rumble and their New Year's Revolution match and yeah, whatever, but it was setting up for that awesome last man standing match. So I will give them a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll give them a little bit of a, of a plausibility. I'll, I'll, I'll let them slide a little bit, but no. Don't try to put that shit on me. Oh, you, 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 So yeah, Solo Soko and John Cena—they're gonna give me that 2006, 2007 kind of, kind of feel. Gonna get it. Gonna give me. Gonna give me a little tingle, a little tingle in my loins, and to decode a little bit of an LA Night promo that just happened not too long ago. Um, yeah, sure, fine, that's cool. But never forget that Umaga and John Cena had a terrible feud. Why is that relevant right now? Could it be because Solo Soko is about to wrestle him, and that's his nephew? Or cousin, I think it's his nephew. Sure, you can say all that. But I just wanted to remind you guys, because I'm a prick. That is all. But yeah, no, real talk. John Cena, so it's cool. They should be able to, you know, wrestle within John Cena's means. And he can take his China loving ass right back to Hollywood and do his thing with them. But with that being said, Dragon Lee and Buster Rhymes are on the ring right now. So let's get to it. Break your neck. Come on. Break your neck. Come on. Uh-oh. We got ourselves another universe mode ass promo. 
Uh, courtesy of Bianca Belair this time. Okay, first off, first things first, let me just say, Bianca, let me just put this out there. Maybe you guys don't know, but I like sh my booty. I like booty. It's more important than food, more important than water. I likes you, Bianca. I wants you. And we can do this the easy way or the hard way, Bianca. The choice is yours. Just, just, just give me the booty. Just, just give me the booty. Did you see what she was wearing? That ass was out there. I was like, damn, damn, damn. I was with my outcast. I was like, damn, 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 damn. Da -da 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 Oh, what am I doing right now? Okay, sorry. Got into the vibe right there. Yeah, but no, Bianca Belair, she came out. She cut a universe mode ass promo. I'm so close to the microphone. Why am I so close? I can see my spit on the Ew, gross. I can see my spit on the microphone. That's so gross. Ew. Wipe this off. Noise, 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 noise. Okay, there we go. But yeah, uh, she came out. She started rambling on. She's like, hey, I'm going to pull myself a Charlie Flair. I'm going to insert myself in this match against EO Sky at Crown Jewel. She kind of stubbed on her words a little, kind of, kind of, little just a little teensy bit. She kind of tripped up on her words, but that's, that's okay because Big Booty Bel Air, she pulled it together. She got her words out and she got the match that she wants. She pulled herself a Charlie Flair and she got her, she got her match. She got her match, okay? Because otherwise, you give her the damn match or she's gonna claim motherfucking racism. You hear that? She's gonna claim some motherfucking racism on your bitch ass. So good for you, good, good, good for you, Big Booty Bel Air. <sighs> and then she like marched out of the ring and she said also she's gonna have a match against Bailey. Hopefully she's not looking like a grandma. Seriously, Bailey, expose your booty too. Your booty is so fat. Yet you're here wearing these, these loose ass pants. You wanna be looked at as a woman. You wanna be respected as a woman. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool, Bailey. I respect you as a woman. My penis does too. Oh, and we also had a match with Dragon Lee and uh, Cedric Alexander, which was fine. I mean, honestly, compared to AEW, I guess you probably say this is nothing more than a regular match. I mean, again, because AEW throws everything against the goddamn wall. Half the time it sticks, half the time it doesn't. Actually, more than half the time it doesn't. So, I mean, this match could have felt a hell of a lot more better, a little bit more special, if you will, if AEW didn't ruin every goddamn thing. Uh, what's coming on next week also? Oh, yeah, that's right. We got Rey Mysterio and Logan Paul doing the weigh-in. We got Bianca Belair in the match against Bailey, as I talked before. Oh, well, is going to be anything else on this on this little bit of a match card? -ish? This match card, if you will. Nothing else? That's about it? Nothing else? Okay, we're good. We're sending Jim Uso inside the race. Let me give you the finish of this match real quick with this these these goddamn minorities. Um, uh, what's his name again? Dragon Lee ended up hitting Cedric Alexander with a standing Shiron. Right? What? That was, uh, I forgot what you call it. It's called a what? A standing Shiranui, I think. Some shit like that. It's Ultimo Dragon's old finisher. The little standing slice bread number two. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, a little bit of a, little bit of an homage to the, uh, to the uh, Ultimo Dragon. Remember that spot that happened at WrestleMania? Wasn't that WrestleMania when Ultimo Dragon was like, doing something and he like bust his ass i can't remember did he like trip i can't remember what happened he embarrassed himself embarrassed himself to the point that he was like fired from wwe I let his contract expire can't remember don't care let's get to this match with fairly night and jim it was showing let's get the book up out of here shall we shall we we must okay okay not a bad ending very uh average for the most part but but that doesn't mean it has to be bad. Average ain't always bad, okay? Average is the size of your penis, and you should be telling yourself, who am I kidding? Your penis isn't average, it's below average. Who the fuck am I kidding? I try to give you guys a little bit of that caveat right there, but I can't. I can't be that charitable. You have small penises. Pause. I don't know that from experience. I promise you, I don't. I don't. I promise you. Where's my binoculars? Okay, no, no, pause. Okay, but no, this match with uh, LA Knight and Jim Uso, it was fun. You know, it, it, it's points. It did its thing. It got LA Knight over. I, I will say this, though. Now, it's not as if LA Knight, you know, like, um, like he needed to win this match, obviously, because you're building up it to uh, Riyadh. You know, obviously, you got the match of Roman Reigns and LA Knight. You know, before I talk about that, let me just finish this match real quick. So, you got a spot, obviously, where LA Knight does his little superplex spot. You know, he runs up the ropes like Shelton Benjamin or Kurt Angle when he does a little superplex spot. I kind of didn't like that. Oh, shit. Burp. Uh! 
Ugh, I didn't like this spot all too much though. Cause like, you know, when you do a superplex, you're supposed to sell it. It's a devastating move. About 40 years ago, that was a finish. I think, what was it? Was it uh, Bob Orton's finish? Randy Orton's dad? I think that was his finish, right? I think other people had that finish. So I think Paul Orndorff did it for a while too, but that's besides the point. You don't just get back up from taking a superplex. Like, I, I never really understood. Is it just me? It's probably just me. I'm pretty sure it's just me. How like you had over the years, people like The Rock doing a rock bottom, an actual slam. John Cena doing an AA or an FU, a slam. And like that finishes matches, but a superplex, that's like twice as high as both of those moves like combine in height. And it's like, it doesn't finish a match. It always just perplexed me when I was a kid. It kind of still does even as an adult. So like, that's already bad enough. I've been seeing that move for like 25 years and it always bugged the shit out of me that it's like, well, yeah, these finishers that are super low and you know, you know well, whatever. Okay, whatever, semantics, right? But then you get, and that's not semantics. That's not how you use the word semantics, Devonta, you stupid bastard. But no, regardless, like you had him just get right back up. I mean, he sold it, but he kind of no sold it. Put him in a groggy state to get set up for the BFT. I, I didn't like that. I don't like people getting directly up from the superplexes, just like I don't like Seth Rollins' freaking Akbar looking head ad boy doing a superplex and then going directly into a falcon arrow i mean that sucks and when people block it man move that fucking sucks it's stupid it's a dumb move it's overall dumb it's so dumb it's dumb dumb dia dumb 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 dia dumb dumb it's dumb even if it went into a bft okay and yeah he got the win yeah roman reigns came out yeah he was actually a fucking smart person did his math and said to himself hey i kind of got a feeling this samoan asshole is gonna pull the same shit he put on me last week or two weeks ago when was it lost track of time maybe i should actually prepare myself this time and that he did roman tried to go for the spear he blocked it he hit his head on the turnbuckle which by the way i thought samoans had like really really heavy heads and they don't really sell head stuff whatever think about the past all too much he got settled for a bft and he took that bft like i'm a fucking bosh and yeah LA Knight stood tall for tonight. He's going to Rhea with a lot of momentum. All this momentum talk. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Momentum, momentum, momentum. Um, but, okay. So, I got my little rant over with the superplex. Now, let's talk about Jimmy Uso. Jim Uso. How would I like to refer to him? Jay Uso. No, Jay will be his brother. Jay, I was going to say Jay as in, you know, like the cat, the, the letter J, but that'd be kind of confusing because his brother name is Jay. And he, whatever. Look. Back in the days, you'd have some kind of interference. You'd do some kind of spot, you know, a little bit of a spot, spot. They kind of saved Jim, Jimmy Uso, whatever, from like taking a clean finish. Now, again, LA Knight needed to win this match. He's the one going into the more important match at Riyadh. I understand that. But like, maybe you should have had Jay Uso like do some kind of distraction. Oh, Devontae, they're on separate shows. Then you just got finished talking about the brands. But shut the fuck up. Okay, stop trying to insert logic within WWE. They don't use it, so I'm not going to use it. Maybe Jay Uso could have had a little bit of a distraction, done something to kind of give, you know, a little bit of an out for Jimmy Uso. Because, I mean, you are building them up to WrestleMania, right? And if I'm not mistaken, I kind of got a feeling where they're going to go down. I mean, they do this all the time. They did it with Brett and Owen. They did it with uh, Matt and Jeff. I mean, clearly, I mean, you guys may say to yourselves, well, Millennial, Devontae, I don't know where you're going with this. That doesn't make any sense. That's because, again, you're like fucking... 11 years old okay let me tell you something okay i've been watching professional wrestling longer than you've been alive and i can tell you the book is gonna go for this jimmy and jay are gonna fight at wrestlemania and i guarantee fucking to you my balls on the line here jimmy's gonna win that match jay's eventually gonna win the entire feud but jimmy's gonna win that initial match at wrestlemania that's how this always goes with these personal brother friend like feuds okay like the babyface always loses in the first encounter unless you're undertaker and kane of which case we just don't talk about but like my point being is, though, you should probably be, like, you know, saving Jimmy Uso. Maybe you should, like, make sure he doesn't take too many, you know, losses. He's taken quite a few losses these past few weeks, unlike Jay, who's a former tag team champion. And he lost his belt via Jimmy Uso. You should be protecting Jimmy a little bit more often so the match can feel a little bit more, um, how do I say, uh, how do, qu'est-ce que c'est, um, not Chris Jericho like in terms of booking and you know oh he's a guy who's actually really hot right now therefore no 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 that's not how it works okay don't make Jimmy like a loser so many times okay you're building up to him versus Jay at WrestleMania and I bet my ass that Jimmy's gonna win the first encounter don't do that to him okay save him a little bit okay help him out a little tiny bit help a brother out okay but overall that did it for that match that did it for tonight and Smackdown tonight 
um i had fun watching it in my own little way i mean people may say to themselves it was a little bit of a tiresome show not enough matches because of course you need more matches in order to you know salvage any kind of show in professional wrestling which is fucking ludicrous and fucking stupid and you're stupid everybody around you stupid horrible you're terrible Oh my God, KL, Ma- oh, you know, no, I'm not gonna go. Am I gonna go that far? I'm not gonna go that far. Huh, yes, and some of you may be like, Millennial, Devonte, why are you like speaking so fast tonight? Why are you so cocaine energy tonight? Okay, maybe you don't know this, but my homeboy Tony kind of sitting right next to me right now. Give me my motherfucking cocaine back. Don't worry, he's passed out right now. OD most likely. I should probably save him, but with him being dead, I'll be saving AEW, so I'm not gonna save him. <sighs> It's good being me right now. But as always, let me get the fuck up out of here as I talked about earlier on. My name is Devante, and I'll be catching you assholes later. Deuces, P.I.S.